Hey, True Believers, Anglin Teen here with another weekly top 10 comic books sold to readers. Once again, Comicron, that is what the comic shops are buying, and this countdown right here is what the reader said. Hey, you know what? I like the look of that on the shelf, and I'm going to take it out of the store. And this week, it was really Amazing Spider-Man number one versus Superman number one. Nick Spencer versus Brian Michael Bendis. What a really crappy week. Anyway... These are the people who contributed, so of course, by all means, if you're in their area, go on in, say hi, maybe pick up something, and don't forget to support your local comic book shop. So, without further ado, let's get started on this countdown. At number 10, starting off the countdown, we have Alan Moore's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Tempest, number 1. Here's a title we don't see enough in the top 10, Wonder Woman, number 50, at number 9. At number 8, we have Titans number 23. The debut of X-23's new book is at number 7. Hawkman number 2 comes in at number 6. It should be so much higher. If you're based on quality, it should be so much higher. At number 5, we have Detective Comics 984. At number 4, we have Robert Kirkman's surprise release, Die, 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 number 1. Number three goes to Flash, number 50, the end of the Flash Wars. At number two, Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man number one shows up. And at number one, we have Brian Michael Bendis' take on Superman number one. So more people wanted to read how Brian Michael Bendis was going to mess up Superman than how Nick Spencer was going to mess up Spider-Man. There you go. I am so much more of a fan of the books that followed those two, but that's neither here nor there. So DC had six, Marvel had two with X-23 number one and Amazing Spider-Man number one, and there were two independents, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and Die, Die, Die. So let's find out what the comic shops have to say about this week. This has to be the FFF. Nobody else writes this much when they're talking about what's going on for the week. The, the, really, they just don't. This is this has got to be them. Anyway, they say, Bendis' Superman and Spencer Spider-Man were both met with pretty positive turnout as both books took the top two sp spots in our FFF Weekly Top 10. Both big-name creators made their mark on these debut issues of Cornerstone characters. Man of Steel sold well, but the big number one and two variant covers made for a successful first issue. Die, Die, Die should have sold even more. If it was our third bestseller, Kirkman dropped a book with two big name collaborators without warning, was a surprise to be sure, but it would have been more welcome if we, the retailers, had actually had at least a day to prep and figure out how to market it. Of course, of Kirkman's three books on the shelf right now, our subs list barely has any overlap. Sure, some people will read anything he puts out, but a preview of some kind would have been helpful. All that is to say, I didn't massively appreciate the jester. While it didn't have the first week it deserved, I know it'll be one of those books that will sell well off the shelf for many more weeks to come. Farmhand also came out to positive reviews, taking number 9 spot in our top 10. Chew fans stuck with it, and some new readers also got drawn in by the crazy art and crazier premiere. Batman number 50 was our 6th bestseller this week, showing that the outrage over the issue hasn't really done our readership any damage. Though I understand why the stores who dropped a pretty penny to get exclusive covers are upset, the controversy got people in stores, and we even had a few people set up folders to start pulling the Bat book. I was wondering about how the whole uh, Die, Die, Die thing would have been taken. It seems like comic shop owners, if they knew what it was would have ordered more so many more Robert Kirkman fans would have gotten it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but I don't know. It it seems like eh, it's a fun stunt, but it just doesn't seem cohesive to an active market of Robert Kirkman fans. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's move on. Bendis has came and conquered. Superman edged out Spider-Man by a hair this week, but the wall crawler sales were nothing to balk at. Those displeased with Dan Slott were quick to jump right back in and give the book a shot with a new status quo shift. Die, Die, Die debuting at number three slot is an impressive feat with literally no reveal that the book was even coming out. Flash and Wonder Woman both hit the list with their milestone number 50s. Particularly the Matina and Frisson variants, X-23 out of the Wolverine costume seems to have outsold all the most recent issues of all-new Wolverine by a wide margin. Titans roped in a few more new subscribers than previous issues. Robert Kirkman and Chris Burnham's surprise drop didn't quite propel Die, Die, Die 
number one to the top of our bestseller list, but it sure came close. It was a runner-up right behind the return of the League of Extraordinarily Ge- Extraordinary Gentlemen. It was close, but ultimately Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill couldn't be beat. I have yet to read or review these two independent giants and their releases. I did open up both of them, and the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was like, hey, boobies everywhere. So I don't know what kind of story he's telling it, should be interesting it to say the least pretty good week for marvel is amazing spider-man number one unsurprisingly takes the top spot x23 number one also showed up to do some work rounding off the end of the top half of the list dc answered marvel's number one with a number one of their own brian michael bendis is superman number one performed solidly dc had a couple of milestone issues 50s excuse me both flash and wonder woman rebirth titles hit their half centennial still selling well Somewhat surprisingly, Hawkman is still hanging in there with its second issue. Keeping up momentum, the rest of the list is mostly usual suspects with the obligatory bat title clocking in at the top five. Of particular note of what's not on the list, Kirkman's big Beyonce move with Die, Die, Die didn't have much of a splash at our store. Perhaps the numbers will pick up a bit as the word spreads. Yeah, I, you know what? I would love to see Hawkman keep up this momentum. By the way, number two was awesome. It's a great book. Cannot recommend it more. It's the new Aquaman for me. Seriously, Aquaman and Hawkman. Those are two fucking books that you should be picking up. Wow, slow week. Amazing Spider-Man number one and Superman number one did not do well for first issues. Amazing Spider-Man for us has lost most of its popularity it had gained with the Red Goblin storyline, it looks like. Marvel did get four titles in our top 10 this week. Flash number 50 took the top spot for us. Hopefully next week, things will pick up again. Dude, I hate to say it, but there's a bevy of milestone issues, some first issues that came out that were supposedly exciting. You might be in trouble, man. DC takes six slots in our top 10, including first place, which was neck and neck race between Superman and the Amazing Spider-Man up to the very end of business. Marvel Tales... Marvel Tales 3, Marvel Takes 3, and Image Takes 1 with Die, 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 number one, the book that no one expected. We're seeing more excitement from readers every week. Apparently, good storytelling is the secret to good sales. Wait, not identity politics? Get out of here, you racist. Who would have ever thought that good storytelling is what it takes to sell books? You know what? I think there should be a movement of some sorts, a group of people, a group of like-minded people to come together and just promote good comic books while pointing out how identity politics is ruining other ones. I, I would love to see somebody get together and put together this kind of really cool movement. I, I think that might be fun. Hmm. I, 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 I do. I think somebody should do that. Anyway, uh, that's what they had to say about that. So uh, any comments on those, put it down in the comment section. Love to hear it. But for now, we're going to go on over to Comixology and see if it's Marvel, DC, or the Independents that win the Digital Wars. Starting off the countdown at number 10 is the awesome Hawkman number 2. Wonder Woman number 50 takes the 9 slot. At number 8, Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns, number 48. Titans number... What is it? I was about to say 73. 23 in the 7 spot is what I should have said. At number six, we have Injustice 2, Chapter 66. Number five goes to Detective Comics again. Ooh, number four, Star Wars Darth Vader, number 18. Good to see this so high. It is a good book. Number three goes to The Flash, number 50. Getting a sense of deja vu as Amazing Spider-Man, number one, takes the runner-up spot at number two. And once again, Brian Michael Bendis beats Nick Spencer with Superman number one. Zero independents were in the top 10 comiXology, top 10 digital sales. Two Marvel, Spider-Man and Darth Vader. And the rest, all eight, were DC. DC kicked ass this week. But let's see if they can win the top 20, because I do like to expand it. And a lot of times, Marvel does own that back 10. Number 11 goes to X-Men Blue, and the score is now 8-3. to three. Number 12 goes to X-23. Number 1, it is 8-4. to four. The Hunt for Wolverine, the Adamantium Agenda. Number 3, it is now 8-5. to five. The gap is closing, ladies and gentlemen. 
At number 14, Plastic Man number two steps up. It is now nine to five. Hello, Dolly Parton. At number 15, Ms. Marvel gets up to bat for Marvel. Nine to six. And at number 17, Rat Queens make sure that Marvel can't even tie. Ten to six as Red Hood and the Outlaw takes the number 18 spot. Monstrous takes the 19 spot. It is now 10 to 6 to 2. And the final chapter of Star Wars Thrawn makes it 10 to 7 to 2. At least they didn't go out completely. I knew that Marvel takes the back end of the top 20. But that being said, it is a dubious thing at best. One, they couldn't even tie for the numbers in the top 20. They couldn't, you know, really come close. And uh, DC owned that top 10. Just absolutely. And once again... I'm going to bring up the good art, the good storytelling. Bendis, meh, you know, but uh, I'm not a big fan of Superman number one. But the other stuff in that top ten is good, and it's definitely good enough to check out. I can say that. I, I, I appreciated all of those. Uh, just saying. I was curious. I did not see Die, Die, Die in the top 20 of the digital. Hmm. I wonder if that will change next week. Anyway, gang, that's all for the top 10 of the hard copies that DC won. What was it? Six to uh, two to f two, wasn't it? That that was the hard copies. And for the digital, DC won 10 to seven to three. It is good to be a DC fan. Now, there are a couple of Marvels out there that are decent enough, but overall... It is, it is a DC world, and we are just living in it. Let me know what you guys think about this, what was left off, what you would have put on. Put it down in the comments section below. Also, if you like this video, click like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. This is the way we're trying to make a living, so if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on and uh, helps keep making videos for you like thank everybody who's already done that and to everyone all of the true believers we say thank you very very much for watching i know you're going to dig this dig this